My name is Will from Cosec Kadari Securities, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Donchin Channel, which is a technical indicator that we implement here at Cosec, and what a lot of professional investors use to better time entry points into stocks or other investments. We use it to spot trends and breakouts, which could lead to huge gains, as well as potential exit triggers that can save you from huge losses. Again, it's very important to use technical analysis to understand market conditions, to find areas of value based on past price movement, as well as to identify potential entry and exit triggers. So as always, any given information given is general in nature, and it does not take into account your personal needs or objectives. For further information, please visit our website, www.cosec.com.au. So what are we going to be going through today? Well, we're going to be looking at a couple of things. First and foremost, what is a Donjin channel? Then we're going to be looking at how it's used. And then we're going to be looking at some practical examples. And then finally, we're going to be looking at how we can combine it with other indicators. So what is a Donchin channel? Well, a Donchin channel is a great tool used by professional investors to make sure they're not catching a falling knife. So really to see we can spot the trend. Okay, a lot of professional investors know that getting a downward trending stock that's potentially overvalued and then buying it and then having it go down even further can be a little bit counterproductive, nor do they like to get involved in businesses that trend a bit sideways. So the whole purpose of a Donchin channel is to help get the timing right to minimize risk by timing that entry and exit point. And we can also use it to spot potential breakouts. So it was developed by professional futures trader Richard Donchin. It provides a potential buy or sell signal, but more importantly, a buy or sell confirmation. So it sort of lags a potential buy signal. And it consists of three parts, the upper Donchin, the lower Donchin, and the midline. So let's go through the formula for how we actually work out the Donchin channel. Now the formula is actually relatively straightforward. As I said before, there are three parts, upper, lower, and middle. To work out the upper part of the Donchin channel, we look at the highest high in the last number of periods. The lower Donchin is very simply the lowest low in the last number of periods, and the middle channel is the upper channel minus the lower channel divided by two. Now there's two parts we need to keep, uh, keep in mind of. First and foremost, the terminology. Some people say upper donchin, lower donchin, middle donchin. Some people might say upper band, lower band, middle band. We say upper channel, lower channel, and middle channel. They all mean the same thing, so don't get confused by that. The second thing that we talk about is the number of time periods. So if you wanted to look at an upper donchin channel, which is the highest high in the past, let's say 10 day periods, then you can change that to 10 number of periods and that will alter what the signal is telling you. Most defaults are set at 20 days. So on most charting tools you'll be looking at 20 day period. Our defaults that we're going to be looking at today with all practical examples will always be stocks in the one year time frame. Each candlestick will represent one day and the Donchin channel will be set at the default of 20 days. So now let's take a look at how we actually use it. So this is a one year chart, unlabeled, okay? And we're gonna be looking at this blue line that goes across the top here, that's the Donchin channel. That's the upper. This one here, going up underneath, is the lower. Obviously this orange band or yellow band in the middle is the midline, okay? Now, how we can apply this is this way. So we'll be looking at a trend reversal change, potentially at about this area here. The stocks come all the way down. At this point, it has now hit the bottom Donchin channel, and we've seen it reverse back up. So we've seen the momentum move back towards the north. At about this area here, it started to trade above that midline. Now, anything that trades above the middle Donchin is showing a technical indicator that potentially momentum is moving in the positive direction. Now here, at this exact point here, we've got a confirmation of a potential breakout. Obviously, we use it in regards to uh, in relation with other indicators, but here we've got a potential breakout, and then from there we can see it just moves nicely up to the north. Let's take a look at another example, like this one here. We've got it nice and low. Okay, it sort of moved back up here to the north. We've seen it cross that uh, that midline at around this point here. We've seen it touch that top Donchin channel there, and then we've seen it sort of move into a positive direction. Now, in terms of that midline. Let's just uh, take away some of these marks. In terms of that midline that we can see through here, we'd actually be using that potentially put our trailing stop loss. 
So we could buy the, the business here, put our long position here, let it move up, and then we could put our trailing stop loss just in and along this orange line through here. You can see that it might touch it, but unless it breaks below it, it's not necessarily a trend reversal. And then once again, we can see that if it's trading above that midline and continually touching the top donchin, it is an indication potentially that the movement for the stock could be up to the north. So let's look at our first example, and today we're going to be using Australia and New Zealand Bank. The ASX ticker code for that is ANZ. Now, as you can see through here, business has been moving down a little bit into a negative direction. However, as with everything, there could be potentially a reversal change. So at this point, we start to identify this getting quite oversold, down nice and low. And around here, we can see our start to see our first hints of a potential reversal. However, there's no confirmation through that as of yet. Okay, so what we'll be looking for is it just to touch that first, the top of that first donchin. Okay. And then from there, we can see the movement is up to the north. We will place our trailing stop loss in under here, okay? And if it falls below that, potentially might be an opportunity to sell. Once again, we'll look at it one more time down through here. You can see that the stock has gotten very low, potentially a little bit oversold. It's moved up, okay, through here. And it touched that top donchin channel at this point here and started to move into a positive direction. We could put our trailing stop loss in and along here. As you can see though, just erase that, just there we actually did go below the midline. Now that is a technical sell signal, so it could hint at a potential reversal, but we can also see that we didn't actually close below that. So one, one option that you could do is to potentially just watch the stock and if it closes the day out lower than that midline, and that potentially there could be a reversal. So let's take a look at our next example. This is QBE insurance, and the ASX to go for that is QBE. Now it's got some pretty wild swings. As we've seen here, the stock has come all the way down. Okay, and here we could identify this potentially a good buying opportunity. We're just waiting for the right time. Obviously, maybe in here again, moved up. Hit that top donchin channel is now trading in this area here above the uh, trading above the the center line, and we can see that it goes on a nice rally back up to the north. We would put our trailing stop loss in there, and at this point here, it could potentially trigger, and we could exit out. Now the same thing would happen if we were looking to potentially go short on the stock. Shorting is something at Cosec that we do do. Okay, and from here we can see that it's come back down again. It's crossed through that midline. That's a technical sell signal. But uh, the confirmation will come when it hits that bottom donchin channel, and you can see that the movement is down to the south. And our next example is National Australia Bank, ticker code NAB. Let's take a look at where we don't want to be in a stock. So this is a stock that has nice little rallies to the north. Nice little upswings, and then does spend a bit of time maybe capitulating or going a little bit sideways. Now, for savvy investors, this is an opportunity cost, as we said before, and it's potentially not a time that we want to be involved in a high quality business. However, we mostly don't want to be involved at this point here when it's trading below that center line through there, typically showing a negative momentum going through here. So, let's take a look at how we would time this. Once again, Touch that bottom donchin channel. We think that potentially it's getting a little bit oversold. Could be a good, good business to get involved with. It's crossed through the center line and now touched the top donchin channel. And from there, moved into a direction to the north. We would place our trailing stop loss along the center line through here. And at that point, we would get triggered out and to move down south. And as you can see, we're actually missing out on most of this big gap. The same thing could be happening again. So we might want to maybe identify through there, maybe touch the top donchin channel there, move to the north, put our trailing stop loss on the center line, and you can see that we can actually miss out on a lot of negativity, a little bit of sideways movement in there. First and foremost, so that the most important thing is always going to be the fact that this, if it crosses the center line, it's obviously not a warranted or a good position to be in because of the, the negativity that is imposed by that. 
For our final example, let's look at combining it with a couple of other indicators. So we're going to use the chart of Cochlea, ticker code COH, and what we're actually going to do is going to combine it with a couple of other indicators through there. So we've got our on our bottom line, we've got our average true range. This one through here is our stochastic, okay, and then we've got our very famous MACD, which is this one right through here. So let's look at how we would potentially look at combining it. So just here, we've seen a stochastic cross which is a good buy signal, and then we've seen that MACD cross, and the volume is sort of moving over the top of it. So those are our two sort of buy indications, and you can see we're just starting to line up with a cross of the moving average. Potentially, we wouldn't look at, uh, look at taking a position up just there, because as you can see, it's not really strongly on the top launching channel. Yes, it did touch it, but it didn't necessarily close there. We want to be having a look at some ones that are sort of showing a little bit of upwards momentum. And then from here, we can see that the movement goes to the north. We would put our trailing stop loss through here. We might get triggered out at this point here. Okay, we're watching it very closely. We might get triggered out at this point here and maybe look to rebuy back through there. Same thing happens in here. So let's look at a little bit more of a delayed response. So we can see through here, we're seeing a bit of a cross on the stochastic. Once again, our MACD is starting to cross a little bit later at this point here. Now, right here, at this point here, you can see that the, the actual price action of the actual stock, yes, we are seeing a cross with the, uh, with the center line, but there's not really a confirmation of a potential buy. We're waiting for our confirmation. Our confirmation is going to happen when we hit that top donchin channel. And as you can see, that's actually quite a bit away from where the moving average crosses. So by using it with other indications, we can potentially time that entry and exit point a little bit better and a little more accurately. So today we've uh, looked at the Donchin channel, we've explained what it is, we've explained how the formulas behind it work and the different parts that entail it, and we've also looked at some well-known examples. And we've also used combination with other indicators to help buy in at the right time, sell out at the right time, so that we can maximize profit and minimize risk. This information is brought to you by Cosec, Qadari Securities. Thank you and have a nice day.